So this lovely beastie you see here is the Jaguar E-Pace. Not to be confused with the F-Pace or the I-Pace. I-Pace electric, F-Pace is bigger. This one kind of fits in the middle of the two. A small, soft rotor that you won't take off-road, but it's still pretty good, looks good, right? So let's check it out. Okay, welcome to the interior of the Jaguar E-Pace. We're gonna go through a few things. First off, the interface on the sat-nav system is Jaguar's own. It doesn't come with Google, Android, Apple CarPlay, probably planned for some stage, but right now it's a Bluetooth system. It operates fine. It's a bit clunky in places and a little bit hard to start clicking things and getting where you want to be. Uh, it does operate nicely. You can zoom in and zoom out. They've improved the processor and the, the processing unit inside it, so it actually goes a bit quicker. They've kept the manual heating controls here, which is very good. Don't ever change that. Um, so they're perfectly operational. Coming further down here, I have some active modes that I can go into for driving the car. We'll have more on those in a few minutes. Um, and the storage, the storage units, the door bins here are giant enough to swallow this thing. So I can just throw it in there if I want. Also in the center here, there are there is a big bin, a big deep bin here in the middle. This has a cover that comes off. That gives you a cup holder that can hold one of these bottles again. You can also take out this entire unit in the center, the bin part, and you're left with a bin that can just swallow a couple of these, three maybe. I'd say three of these bottles would probably fit into this center console. Quite what you're supposed to do with this, I don't know, but it doesn't matter because it's plenty of space, you know. Um, going to give a mention of something else here as well, which is the Jaguar, if I can find it here. This is not an activity tracker like you'd see elsewhere. This is actually Jaguar's key. So instead of you having to haul this key around the place, so if you're going swimming in the swimming pool, for instance, uh, or you're going surfing, or you're going cycling or running or, or anything that involves you driving to something and then having to haul this key around uncomfortably, which I do find. So I, I get this 100% this works. Uh, so you put this, leave that in the car and you bring this with you instead as a watch. So you wear this as a watch, as a bracelet type thing. Uh, and you can unlock and unlock the doors of the car. It's a very simple idea, but God, it's a perfect idea for anybody like me who goes, you know, I go cycling, I go um, uh, running. So this carrying a big brick around with you the whole time is always a pain in the hole. So, so this is a really good idea and that's in your car as well. It comes in a little case like this. I'm not sure how to charge it. I wonder how you charge it. It's got to be fairly straightforward. Probably wireless charging or something. There's something in the car charges it here. Um, the rest of the car, so looking at the interior itself, the, the materials used are good little soft bits here and there, but it doesn't take you very long to find the kind of cheaper plasticky stuff that's in here too. You know, especially this, this uh, sunglasses holder. If you're in the driver's seat, I want to show you something. If you're small, either a small man or a small woman, look how high I'm going here. You will, you will have no problem with this. That's as high as I can go, right? So I, that's me. That's me up tall. Now I can see over the top of that bonnet. I mean, that's proper. That's proper height adjustment there, Jaguar. Well done. I like that. Uh, now it wouldn't bother me one way or the other because I'm I'm over six foot, so. When I sit into one of these cars, I usually have to do this, which is go all the way down to the floor. Uh, but I'm actually so low down now, I do have to lift up to get into my driver's position, which I'd normally prefer. Lots of movement on those seats as well. That's pretty good. One thing I will point out is in the back. So in the back, apart from the luxury leather care that has its stuff on it, uh, it's actually quite good. You get three USB ports here in the middle, which is really good, and your own air vents as well, and a fair bit of leg room, and it's a little tiny bit tight on the top, but it's okay, I, I do fit, but particularly with this glass roof, which gives me a hole, you know, uh, this extra bit I can put my head into. Uh, but I do fit in the back seat, so there's actually plenty of room back here as well, and we get a nice little center armrest, uh, which my daughter's calling Ella, for some reason, I don't know why. Um, and it's a luxury feel back here. The, the materials used are very good. There's a plastic back on this for little feet when they're banging against the back of the seat. Get a net on the back. And again, with the massive, most of door pockets in either side. I don't know how they've done it and managed to keep the crumpled zones and crash zones working very well. They're not full of anything in here. 
possibly because this car is heavier than the F-Pace, so they've had to put more rigidity into it somewhere along the way. So coming around the back of the car, it's a bit windy at the moment, hold on a second. This has the electric tailgate, which is really slow. That's really slow, by the way. Uh, space in here, yeah, it's pretty good. It's all right. It's not the biggest car I've ever seen inside. You don't get a spare wheel. You do get some extra storage under the floor. Um, these things all come out, but there's nowhere to put that, right? And there's, there's another one up here that blacks out the back window as well, but there's nowhere to put that either. So I'm not too sure what you're supposed to do with them. <laughs> Supposed to just leave them somewhere when you need them out. Uh, you can drop the back seats, which is done by pressing a button and dropping them down. When you do, you don't get a flat floor, so it goes back in, but it, it you know it's things can slide back down that way. Overall, not a bad boot. You do get a 12 volt socket back here, and you get shopping bag hooks. It's not a bad boot, it's just a little bit on the tight side, and I'm not sure what to do with this stuff. Okay, so getting back into the front seat for a minute. This is where the Jaguar should be a jag, you know? Uh, so, start up. Not a great noise now, if I'm honest with you. So, here's what my problem is. I'm not actually off-road. I've just driven off the side of the road a little bit. The road is over there by about 15 meters, if even that. This is a soft roader, right? Uh, it actually weighs a little bit more than its big brother, the F-Pace. So put in D, it doesn't have an off-road set, I didn't say it is an off-roader, but it looks like one, right? The suspension is so hard that even just driving across a little bit of bumpy, bloody hell, a little bit of bumpy ground, it's not off-road, is very uncomfortable. Okay, so you have in Ireland we have the engine choice of 150 horsepower, 180 horsepower, and a 200 and something horsepower. I, I doubt very many people are going to touch that one. The 180 is the one that's in this, and it's probably the one that people are going to buy as well. This is attached to a nine-speed gearbox, uh, which on the cruise on a motorway can't make up its mind whether it wants to be a ninth or eighth. It's constantly flicking between the two for overtaking purposes. But actually, for cruising purposes, it's not too bad. Now, poke it with a stick, you're going to hear the noise. It's all a bit... Now, the biggest problem I have is the gearbox change down speed, right? So, you're at a junction, you want to pull away, you want to be quick about doing it. The car can't decide what gear it's going to give you. Same problem happens when you're trying to overtake. You put your foot down and the car takes a, just a, that extra like two, three seconds to figure out what you wanted to do. It's a bit like it's sitting there going, what do you want to do? Do you, do you want to change down or, or up? Or maybe, maybe you just want to keep the same gear. Maybe you don't want to like much. And there's the power coming now and I floored that. Like it went all the way down to the floor. So it's, that's really like, don't do that Jag figure out a better way of making that happen but on the actual move on the cruise the car is okay the car does pretty all right the suspension's a little bit firm they've had to toughen the whole lot up because the car is quite heavy and it feels that heaviness behind the wheel as well uh, steering is a very light touch it's like they chickened out it's like they knew the car got heavy so they've added a little bit extra when it comes to the steering so the whole car feels like it's gonna sharply turn to a corner when actually it doesn't. It doesn't feel very jag, jag. It doesn't feel sharp and edgy. It just feels like I can feel every, you can see the camera going, right? Every little tiny bump in this main road, I can feel it. I can actually tell you that that yellow paint over there is thicker than the white paint in the middle. Look, if I was to give the car a mark overall, I'd say somewhere between six and seven out of 10. It's beautiful to look at. They've got the looks and the, the, the quality sort of feel to the outside and inside is, is pretty good, you know? Uh, and certainly the looks just look great. I mean, it's a really premium looking car on the outside. Dimensions, proportions, they're all okay. It's just been let down by bits of the drivetrain and, and where accountants got involved because you know that like Jaguar's in a bit of stick at the moment with money wise there's some layoffs happening uh, Tata the parent company the money that, the money that comes from them 
is not drying up but they're starting to make cuts in places that make sense because they want more profit they want more cars sold they want to be able to sell cars at a more reasonable price and you know you can't do that and continue turning out the quality end of things that Jaguar have the problem that the E-Pace has right now is the Audi Q3 forthcoming right here in this country it'll be here probably for 2019 sales and I've driven that internationally and in petrol form it feels light and nimble and ready to use and just feels like a good little car you know and this feels like a big heavy English mahogany sideboard beside it some people will enjoy that other people probably won't but look at while you're here hit the subscribe button and if you really like these videos you should watch every single one of them thanks very much uh, plus there are links down below for some support you can give to the channel be hugely appreciated if you can but until the next time I will see you on the far side